A beloved co-star's passing inspired Sarah Michelle Gellar to become even closer with her own family. From health struggles to toxic productions, these are the dark chapters from which she emerged stronger. Sarah Michelle Gellar grew up in a single-parent household, but her mom made sure that she never lacked love or support. The actress is perfectly willing to speak about her adoration for the parent who raised her, but she's much less inclined to talk about her father. As she put it to Rolling Stone in 1998, I might have been an immaculate conception. You never know. My father, you can just say, is not in the picture. In 2001, Geller's father died from a suspected overdose. He'd reportedly been struggling with depression after being diagnosed with cancer. The following year, Sarah Michelle showed no signs of mourning during an interview with Movie Line. As she put it plainly, he's not a part of my life. Sarah Michelle Geller is a big fan of Pilates, as it helps alleviate pain caused by a condition she's had since childhood scoliosis, which is an abnormal curvature of the spine. Cases that are more severe can gradually worsen and can affect other parts of the body, making the hips, shoulders, and ribs uneven. For Geller, she was under the wrong impression that her personal behavior caused her condition. As she explained to Health Magazine in 2011, Growing up in Manhattan, you had your school bag, but we were so trend-conscious, nobody wanted to put a backpack on both shoulders, so almost all the girls I grew up with have it to some degree because we all were so lopsided. But in actuality, most cases of scoliosis are genetic, while a smaller percentage are caused by certain diseases or injuries. Geller actually made the best of it by using her condition as an excuse to skip school to go to auditions. As she admitted to the Washington Post in 1997, I had more absences in the first month than you're supposed to have in an entire year. I was telling them I had back problems and had to go to doctors all the time." Sarah Michelle Gellar was 15 years old when she joined the cast of the soap opera All My Children. She starred as Kendall, the long-lost daughter of Erica Kane, played by Susan Lucci. Erica was known for her propensity for drama and villainy, and apparently, it wasn't that different off-screen. As Gellar revealed to Rolling Stone in 1998, it was not the easiest situation on the show. I'm being polite by not saying what I'd like to say. Geller won a daytime Emmy for her work on the show in 1995, four years before Lucci did. By the time of Lucci's win, Geller had stepped away from the series and was pursuing other opportunities. During an episode on the E! Show Revealed, she said that she'd been desperate to get out of her contract, which had already prevented her from starring in the classic 1995 teen movie Clueless. Ugh, oh, as if! As reported by Deseret News in 1999, Geller had a hard time dealing with the tension on set because she'd never experienced similar issues with other co-stars. Ultimately, though, she learned a valuable lesson from the whole ordeal. As she put it, "...sometimes two people just shouldn't work together, and that's an instance where we probably should not work together again." In her most famous role, Sarah Michelle Geller put a stake through the heart of the notion that women can't be action stars. But while she was celebrated for bringing that energy to the small screen on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, certain people were working to thwart the feminine forces of good. As she revealed during a roundtable at the RAP's 2022 Power of Women Summit, "...for so long, I was on a set that I think was known for being an extremely toxic male set." Geller's experiences early in her career made her assume that it was normal for friendships to be discouraged among female actors, and for women to view each other as adversaries. She didn't name names, but she'd previously expressed her support for her Buffy co-star Charisma Carpenter, who has accused series creator Josh Whedon of fostering a negative environment. In a 2022 interview with the New York Times, Geller explained that she was reticent to go into detail about some of her own negative experiences because she feared how people would react. As she put it, "...in this world where people get torn apart and victim-blaming and shaming, I just keep my stories in here." From 2013 to 2014, Geller played the daughter of Robin Williams's character on the CBS sitcom The Crazy Ones. The role was a dream come true for her, partly because she got to work alongside such a comedic genius. After Williams killed himself in 2014, she paid tribute to her co-star by writing in a statement, "...to me, he was not just an inspiration, but he was the father I had always dreamed of having. I will miss him every day." Geller also enjoyed getting to see the dynamic between Williams and his daughter Zelda and working with him tested her acting skills as he made it hard not to break character. As she told your tango, "...it's sort of like when my three-year-old says something really inappropriate and it's really funny, but I can't laugh. That's kind of like working with Robin." It's Robin Williams, so you want to like, you want to know your stuff and, and we just fall apart when he leaves. Geller decided to take a hiatus from acting after Williams's death, as it deepened her desire to spend more time with her own children, Charlotte and Rocky. 
but before she returned in the 2022 movie Do Revenge and the Paramount Plus series Wolfpack, she experienced another devastating loss when her All My Children co-star John Callahan passed away in 2020. As she remembered him on Instagram, he stepped into a lot of moments in my life because I didn't have a father to be there. I want the world to know how much you meant to so many people. In a 2011 interview with Health Magazine, Sarah Michelle Gellar revealed that she regularly avoided looking at her own reflection. As she noted, I totally have body dysmorphic disorder. I think most women do. Gellar became less fixated on her appearance after becoming a mom, although she was still unhappy with the way her body looked after giving birth twice. As she admitted to Express in 2020, obviously your body expands in that middle region. To create life is amazing, but then it's hard to get back to where you were. She also felt public pressure to lose the weight she gained during her pregnancies, as she explained, I tried to block it out as much as I could, but I'd be lying if I said those comments didn't hurt or that I was immune to them. In addition to working out, Geller also underwent cool sculpting treatments to get her body back to the way she wanted it to look. I may look young, but I think even we can all agree that I do not look like an adolescent. After Geller gave birth to her first child, Charlotte, in 2009, she gushed to People magazine. Every day I look at her and I am in awe. She was also glad that she waited until she was in her 30s to start a family because she felt like she was better prepared for parenthood. As she put it, Becoming a parent is the most selfless act, and you need to be at a point in your life where you can give up anything and everything for a child. Alas, Geller also found herself facing a challenge her maturity couldn't prepare her for. As she revealed in 2017 on Facebook, I love my children more than anything in the world, but like a lot of women, I too struggled with postpartum depression after my first baby was born. But Geller also assured other moms going through that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. As she put it, I got help and made it through, and every day since has been the best gift I could have ever asked for. To those of you going through this, know that you're not alone and that it really does get better. Geller didn't realize that she was going into labor when she was pregnant with her daughter Charlotte, which might have been because she was already aching all over when her labor pain started. She experienced a bout of nausea while working out with her trainer, who suggested that the baby might be on the way. Luckily, Geller managed to get back home and get a little rest before it was really time to go. Ultimately, that labor experience turned out to be relatively straightforward, but the arrival of Geller's second child three years later was a much different story. As she revealed during an appearance on Late Show with David Letterman, she was worried that she might have to give birth on the freeway. She ultimately made it to the hospital mere minutes before she and her husband, Freddie Prince Jr., welcomed their son, Rocky. While the labor didn't last very long, there was one significant complication. I think I yelled so loud, I actually fractured my jaw. Oh my True story. I had to have surgery afterwards. I did. Fractured your jaw. From Sarah Michelle Gellar was beside herself with worry when she had to make her first emergency room trip as a mom in 2017. That was when her son Rocky had to spend the night at the hospital. As she revealed on Instagram, I'm not going to lie, watching your child not be able to breathe is the most helpless I have ever felt. The culprit of his health scare was a particularly aggressive virus. Gellar is naturally very protective of her kids, which made it challenging for her to return to work after taking a long break but also she wants to lead by example by demonstrating to her children that it's possible to successfully juggle a career and parenthood. However, she can't help but feel guilty about spending time away from her family. As she told Us Weekly in 2022, there's something about physically not being there that is very hard for me. Even when she's at home, she sometimes finds it difficult to relax and enjoy her time with her kids. As she told Pop Sugar in 2022, I think my hardest challenges are the ones I put on myself and the pressure that I put on myself to get it all right and be everything to everyone. Sarah Michelle Gellar has had to witness two of her closest friends come to terms with difficult illnesses. After her Cruel Intentions co-star Selma Blair revealed that she had multiple sclerosis, Gellar would often find herself thinking about how Blair was incapable of playing with her son the way that she used to and how difficult that must be for her but she also applauded her friend's resilience and saw her as an inspiration. As she put it to Us Weekly, I think she's tougher than I ever thought. Blair was even able to beat Geller's Rock in October 2019 when the Getty wildfire came so close to Geller's home that she and her family had to evacuate. As she wrote on Instagram, I am definitely scared and emotional, but then I get a surprise of Selma Blair and now I can't stop smiling. These moments remind me to be grateful for all the blessings I have, and Selma, you are certainly one of them. Geller was also a source of support for Shannon Doherty when the latter was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. Geller admired her pal for speaking out about her experience with the disease and came away with an important lesson. 
As she told Entertainment Tonight in 2020, we have to live for each moment because there is a clock for everybody. I can attest that there's nothing you can't do. Thanks, well, uh, you we'll chose, find something, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll find something. Change, change. If you or someone you know needs help with mental health, please contact the Crisis Text Line by texting HOME to 741-741. Call the National Alliance on Mental Illness Helpline at 1-800-950-NAMI-6264 or visit the National Institute of Mental Health website.